Yes, can everyone hear me and us online? Okay, Let me react with a thumbs up. Oh, we're good to stop. Awesome, cool. Thank you very much for joining everyone today for this session on pathways to sustainability for research projects and outputs. We've got a very ambitious, quite packed session for you guys today, um, but hopefully it should be really interesting um, and loads of thoughts come up from it um, that will help us all um, both today and beyond this workshop as well. So quickly, some brief intros. My name is Hurry. Like when you go somewhere quickly, you're in a hurry. Apologies if you've heard that before. I know some of you have. Um, I'm a research application manager at the um, Alan Turing Institute. My pronouns are he, him. We've got Cami online, if Cami wants to introduce yourself. Hi, everyone. My name is Cami Rincon. I use they, them pronouns, and I'm a research application officer at the Turing. I'll be helping uh, with online facilitation today. Uh, I'm, and I'm Anne. I'm a community manager also based at the Allen Turing Institute um, that works with the Turing Way project, which I'll talk about for a second during this presentation. <laughs> As I mentioned. Okay. Cool. So um, a bit of housekeeping before we start. As we said, there's the collaborative notes, which I think hopefully all you guys have access to where you can check in and you also see the other links on there as well. We will be primarily using a Miro board today. Um, so I think the one link to have access to and make sure you have access to is that Miro board. And we'll be talking in groups, adding thoughts to that Miro board. Um, and on that Miro board, there's a link to some additional resources. We'll talk through what those are. There's also a link to them there. If you do have questions, so we're going to have like a 10 minute presentation. This is mainly intended as an interactive session. So um, not spending a huge amount of time on the presentation to begin with but if any questions come up over the next 10 minutes so we can um, add them to the slido and i guess spend a few minutes going through them as well and then for the interactive part um within the room Anne and i will just be like popping around between different groups to have chats with you guys cami's online to jump into different breakout rooms for you guys online um any questions that come up there we can kind of just take them as they come we'll then come back for a wrap up at the end so as i mentioned very brief introduction to sustainability within research. That's not going to be a final objective answer, as I'm sure you can imagine, because it's a very complicated question, but really focusing on this group activity, getting you guys thinking about what sustainability looks like for real world projects. And then we'll come back at the end for a 10 minute wrap up and share out as well. So without further ado, um, introduction to sustainability, a bit of preamble. Um, we are from the Alan Turing Institute, which is established in 2015 as the National Institute for Data Science and AI with the main focus areas of advancing world-class research and applying it to real-world problems, training the leaders of the future in data science and AI, and leading the public conversation as well. We are all part of the Tools, Practices, and Systems program at the Turing Institute, or TPS, which you may have heard of, um, which is focused on driving a culture change in research by promoting and modeling open working, a team science mentality, advocating for and disseminating best practices in interoperability, reproducibility, and reusability of research outputs. And you'll see these themes sort of popping up um, a lot as we go through the session today. We, an example of a flagship project, as you mentioned, the sort of honorable mention for Turing Way, um, part of the TPS program. It is, you may have seen the lightning talk earlier or remember it as well. It is an open source guide on data science and looking to involve and support a diverse community to make data science reproducible, ethical, collaborative, and inclusive for everyone. And a really big sort of the TPS steer on this is it's not just a resource, it's not just a book. It's also a community that serves everyone who wants to be involved, not just in the UK, but internationally. It is an open source project, open to contributions and collaboration, and really fostering the sense of and culture of collaboration. Um, and you can see why the TPS team has such a strong representation at collaborations workshop and very similar philosophies. Tammy and I are from the Ramos team, or the Research Application Managers and Officers team. We did go for rounds, but we decided that Ramos is maybe slightly easier to say. Um, but our focus is thinking about um, enhancing the real world impact of research outputs um, by engaging external stakeholders and users and adapting outputs for real world use. So making sure that any research that's done at Turing basically doesn't languish at the end of a research project, but see some sort of real world impact and making sure that those public funds are being used for positive change in the world as well. Um, we as a team have a range of backgrounds. We come from um, startup backgrounds, product backgrounds, all that kind of thing. So thinking about, can we take that kind of steer um, towards research outputs at the Turing and beyond as well? And one really big question and buzzword we're going to throw up there and say is, oh, sustainability. When everyone talks about impact and real world sort of implications and stuff from research, it's always talking about how am I going to make my research sustainable? There's a number of different definitions of the word sustainability. We're aware of that. Um, so just to make sure we're all thinking in the sort of same concept of sustainability, one of the key question we're kind of asking is, 
how can we approach research projects so that they aren't purely limited by funding cycles or funding windows? So how can we get to the stage where research we're doing, when the funding ends, the research doesn't just stop and languish and go, but we're doing something to think about making that research sustainable beyond that specific funding window. And so sort of to elucidate why this matters, um, we found it kind of useful to think about what happens if we don't think about that. Um, so on the right is a screenshot from an anonymous repository. I'm not going to talk about which one. From a Turing Institute project, um, which you can see has had roughly 1,400 commits. So obviously it's been quite active at some point in time. This was a project that was a collaboration um, across different uh, project uh, programs at the Turing, but also different institutions around the country. Um, it was funded multiple times across different funding windows. The last piece of funding for it ended in the summer of 2022. And you can see from the date and then what's happened since then is that pretty much when the funding ended for the project, the project also ended. Um, and the reasons why this, is a, this isn't necessarily always an issue, but can be an issue, is firstly, there was a project team working on this and who built up a lot of knowledge and expertise in the particular domain area of this project, who then move on to different projects. And that knowledge and expertise they built up will slowly sort of like... Um, dwindle over time and eventually go away unless they come back to it. Um, also, just from a team and individual point of view, like a lot of effort and work went into this project. A lot of people spent a lot of time working on it. Um, and if we are not doing our best to make sure that we're seeing some kind of longevity to it afterwards, it, it potentially is lost again, not necessarily, but potentially. Um, also, a big one is if it's not set up to be picked up again, people will likely and not able to be found people will likely duplicate this work or do similar work in the future which is, is really not great um and primarily like all of this is kind of like the loss of impact from the research this research was funded at some point for a particular purpose for a particular aim to have some kind of real world impact if we're not thinking about this kind of sustainability we're, we're losing that um, potential impact again i say potential because it's not always the case but there's a high potential that could be the case um so then it, it's hopefully clear that sustainability um, of research output is an important thing to think about. Then in terms of what it looks like, we don't have an answer <laughs> for you guys, mainly because as a RAMO team, we're thinking about this question and it is an ongoing question for us to try and figure out. And the point of today is to present you guys like our initial thoughts on how we think you can think about it and then get you guys to try using that framework and see like, does it work? Are there things missing? All that kind of stuff and make this quite a collaborative effort on trying to understand what we mean and, and what factors are important when we think about sustainability. Nevertheless, we, we do have a starting point, a start of a 10 for everyone, which we're thinking there's sort of three main questions you can ask yourself or broad questions you can ask yourself about your outputs. And we think if you're doing that well, you are considering sustainability for your research quite well. It doesn't guarantee that you'll see some kind of longevity and, and really high impact all that kind of stuff from your research, but you're at least sort of having the right mindset towards it. So one big question is, are your research outputs reusable? So can they be reproduced by other people and teams? Are they well documented? Are they open? Are they, do they cater for a wide range of skill sets and domains and all that kind of stuff? So that sort of as a baseline, if funding just stops, if then funding happens again in the future or some other model happens in the future, people can come in and pick it up straight away and not have to spend ages trying to figure out what's going on. So as kind of like a baseline, are your research outputs reusable? Then really thinking about whether your research outputs are what we're calling applicable. Oh, that hasn't loaded. There we go. Um, applicable. So not only are they open and able to be picked up by people, but they've got like a user base that you're aware of. They've got use cases you're aware of. You're aware of what context they could be used in, how they might be picked up. They also do fulfill a real world need and are solving a real world problem so that there will be some people beyond the research team who are interested in making sure this research isn't lost, but continues some, some way into the future. And then if you're answering those questions and you can tell these are start of a 10 thoughts as opposed to really cleverly defined formal words with words like resourceable in here. Um, but if they are reusable, if they're open, if you know where they can be applied and how they can be used, then you can start asking the more pragmatic questions of, okay, so what are the operating governance finance models that could support this project? Does it need people to own and maintain the outputs? If so, who are these people going to be? How are they going to do it? Do they need to be paid or can they just be um, a community group? But also what other resources might they need? Do they need additional finances, staffing, infrastructure costs, storage costs, all that kind of stuff. And how can they be provisioned? So for us, those are like the three big things to think about, at least to begin with. And I think the really important thing to say when we've had this conversation a lot is it's really easy to just focus on the pragmatics of resources of just saying, okay, like how am I going to find funds for this? And how am I going to find a model that works? All that kind of stuff. But we think like diving a bit deeper, really focusing on like what makes our outputs 
reusable and open what tools skills and knowledge and stuff do you need to be able to use them and where are they going to be applied and what is the context of where it's going to be applied and who's going to use it and what does their world look like if you're answering those questions really accurately a um a governance operating model a finance model will like hopefully reveal itself as a bit more realistic a bit more viable all that kind of stuff and it might not require finances if you have a really engaged community who are already con contributing to your code base when you're working in your research project it might be able to be a community-run project without financial backing as well that is the wh the whistle stop intro to our like startup at 10 on sustainability we'll take questions in a second but just to um explain to you guys what this activity looks like um so we have uh taken two real world Turing projects. What's that going to show you? Perfect. So instead of just having like a broad sort of conceptual discussion about whether these are the right way to think about sustainability, um, we want to try and apply it to real world projects at the Turing that are currently thinking about sustainability consideration. Um, oh, nice. <laughs> Look at all those people who are here. Sick. So um, we have two case studies. One is the Turing Data Safe Haven project, which is focused on trusted research environments. And one is the Turing Commons um, project, which is sort of educational resources for ethical AI. Sorry, the screen's a little bit laggy um, down there. And what both these projects have on the Miro board, um, just to talk you through it, is oh, the screen is a little bit laggy. So wait for it to arrive cool so we've got like a case study which is a very broad overview of the project and hopefully enough detail to get started i think the key thing to say is we're not expecting um everyone to have a really clear understanding of everything about this project but more just enough to ask some questions about how sustainability pathways could work for it um so you've got an overview of the project you've got um, the project aims so what the teams are trying to do how they're currently funded to give you context of where that sort of financial resource is coming from um, also like key stakeholders that might be end users it might also be builders and collaborators potential commercial partners all that kind of stuff as well um, and a rough indication of team size to show you what kind of like staffing requirements are needed to to deliver this project and what we've built um, is this very um start a framework for thinking about sustainability so on those points of reusability applicability resource ability if you think of a better word for that one please let us know um but we thinking about those specific points and we've got some questions for you guys to think about in terms of based on what you understand the project what are the key outputs what would make their outputs easy to find and reuse um, what kind of skills and knowledge and training do people need to be able to use them properly? Then asking those questions about use cases. What are the use cases? Who are the users? What problems is this solving? And then thinking about, okay, based on those things, who can we expect to be able to realistically maintain these outputs? What other resources will they need? And if we get onto it, based on all that stuff, what kind of operating model do we think is viable for these research outputs going into the future? Um, this, this is a lot. And we're aware that like this is um, also like, conceptually a lot as well as thinking about sustainability and um, so i'll re i'll re-emphasize this in a minute but we're not expecting you guys to to tell us all what the viable sustainable operating model for these projects is um it's more have a go at this if there's specific points in your groups that like need more discussion or warrant more discussion have them we're not expecting you to get all the way through completing it but more like start talking about it and share some thoughts i think there's both the actually trying to do this for projects but also as i said this is like a uh, it's basically trial of this workshop and this framework. So if there's things that are missing from it, if from your conversations, it's really clear that actually this shouldn't be there or this should be there as well, recording that as well. And we can start to like collectively build this idea of what, what research sustainability looks like. And that's why we have a couple of car park areas for other important things to consider. And also down here, additional notes. Two other quick things to mention. So on this link here, if you are stuck, I'm not sure where to start. Um, there are a few resources on there that provide you potential frameworks for thinking about things like different operating models, like how to identify users, all that kind of thing. Again, with like half an hour, 40 minutes, we can't deep dive into that, but it might give you a couple of ideas. And just in case you've heard all this and you're like, oh, the research project I'm working on at the moment could really do with going through this exercise and I actually really want to put it through that please feel free to in your groups. I think it might be slightly tricky to get the sort of knowledge across and then do it as well. But also we want to give you guys the chance to do that if it makes sense. Um, so that is kind of it. Again, as I mentioned, firstly, 
this is going to be hard and we're not expecting you guys to come up with all the answers, but mainly start having a discussion about it and see if we can elucidate some of the concepts around sustainability. Don't worry if you don't get through everything, more just give um, everything the time it needs. And I think a useful bit of feedback that comes out of this, if it happens, is half an hour is not enough time. Then if we're doing this workshop in the future, we can make sure we have longer time. Um, and yeah, please challenge it as you see necessary. This isn't something that's been tried and tested and proven to work. It's more like our starter for how to think about this stuff. So please, if things don't make sense or we're unclear about stuff, share those thoughts and drop them down. Um, and we will feed this back to the teams, um, the RAM team and the project teams as well. Do we have any questions to begin with? Is there anything on the slide? Eh? Cool. Yeah. yeah, can you just read out? <laughs> yes, this this might be where a clarification of wording is used is useful. Where it says reusability is just like they're open and they're um someone can come in and reuse them. So I think that's sort of absolute baseline for that is being open, right? Then the reproducibility is that kind of piece of good documentation, like clear instructions, clear processes around it that means anyone anywhere can pick it up. I guess like accounting for different skill levels, languages, all that kind of stuff. So it's actually like proactively reproducible as opposed to just able to be reused somewhere else. Um what what we what we'd say probably is reusable it's like a baseline just make it reusable and like do your best to make it as reproducible as possible thank you good question again in your conversations if there's like confusion around it and that's a language thing then please like note that down and we can think about how he presents it as well cool in which case i'm going to leave this slide up um just as a reminder of what we were talking through um what we're going to do is in the room we're going to have six groups so we'll have groups one and two, three and four, five and six. Um, I guess maybe split roughly vertically. So let's call it here, one, two, here, three, four. And then <laughs> I'm purposely going in the gaps there, five, six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. You'll be able to find your specific group board on the Myro. How many people do we have online? We're doing yes. two groups online, Harry. Yep, two rooms. So I guess um, if you put in group seven and group eight as the breakout room names, and then don't assign Cami because Cami is jumping around, but otherwise everyone else can be assigned randomly. Uh, yep. Yeah. Yep. And then in your groups, have a read through of the case study and just start have go all those questions. Um, so each each Mario board has the group of four. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. And there should be on, on the boards, there should be the specific group names as well. Um, in the room, if you have questions, Anne and I are here. If you're online, Cami will be jumping between rooms to help you out. We will gather again in about half an hour's time. Can you hear me on Zoom? Awesome. All right. Thank you very much, everyone, for that. Hopefully it was an interesting, thought-provoking discussion. Um, as you said, this is like a, a starter for trying to build some kind of framework and language and conceptual way of talking about this stuff. would love to hear any like 
e takeaway thoughts we can start maybe with the the groups in the room and then go online um i guess group one were there any key one or two key ideas that came out of your conversations you'd like to share again no worries if not don't want to put you on the spot Am I saying stuff? Yeah. We're, we're group one. <laughs> so I'm saying stuff now. Right. Uh, the only the only key thing I thought we had an interesting discussion around who the end users of were because we were like we were like oh well so the, the this is a software product you know that's being being handed out that's being installed to set up these TREs so obviously your initial sort of user ID is the is the people who are going to be installing that software but obviously the ones you're really interested in are the end users so we identified different research communities that we thought were sort of likely users of tres the the data sensitive ones being the ones that first sprang to mind but um so thanks to jez as well so ones who are operate with data that's you know, statutorily regulated yeah and that's that's another interesting group um that was the one of the big things we discussed what else was there we struggled a lot with the um, struggle with trying to find models for sustaining um these kinds of projects other than the usual commercial spin-off CIC um that subscription service was a was a new one I've just read in the on the board so yeah thank you and also just to say with that I think there's where like no expertise really comes in like if it's you struggle to think of ones apart from some such obvious ones it might just be because those obvious ones are like the only ones that really seem viable I think then approaching that question with a bit more certainty like what well, we've looked into it kind of from the ground up think about who the users are problem areas still just to seem like this is the right way to do it without a bit more certainty it feels like it can be a bit more implementable and any other thoughts i thought there's a hand up over there so do maybe one more thought from the room then one online so uh we were in the other project in the uh in the hearing commons uh project and where we have been discussing several funding models several um uh, outputs uh, that will be required uh, but i think that curiously i think it's the last question what that that we were discussing that pins point what's the problem that we are trying to solve it, which is what's the time horizon of the project how for, for how long this needs to be sustainable because we are not talking about being sustainable for 200 years or so what that will define what's the sustainability model that we want to define what what are the resources that are needed uh, and at some point it might become that this is obsolete. There's no point of, of maintaining it. So that might be something that it's useful to have defined at some point. Um, and yeah, but we had a lot of other stickers there, but that was something that pops at the end saying, well, that might be something we need to discuss first. Um, perhaps one of the more fundamental questions we should be thinking about, and I believe this may crop up in the future, the more SSI becomes impactful, is making a case for the sustainability before funding is given, so that you don't have to grapple with, you know, how, how can we make this project sustainable now that we've given you two million pounds? Well, you should have thought about that before, but you get what I'm saying. I'm not trying to um, cast any aspersions against these projects, but a lot of the questions that come up are surrounding okay, what what is the the rationale behind this project to begin with, like what what is the market need, like who has asked for this, to know whether there is demand that can then sustain the project in and of itself. Thank you guys, both really good thoughts. I'm aware of the time, meaning that we will be around to um, discuss this afterwards. Well, I think there's a break or drinks or something, right? Um, we'll go online in a second as well, but just to think about both those two things, the, there's an interesting question. So that timeline line thing we're talking about over there as well, Sorry. sustainability doesn't need to yeah, be forever. It can be set time periods and that will also impact the kind of viability models you go for as well. Like if there's seems like prolonged demand for the work you're doing, you might think a more sort of like spin out kind of route is viable. If it's kind of serving one particular purpose, that's likely, likely to change in the future or like in the near future, it doesn't mean that it can't be sustainable. It might just mean that the pathway to sustainability does have like a limited time period on it, right? And that's changes our understanding of what we take to mean sustainable. It doesn't mean limitless. It can just mean the way I see it personally is like 
maximizing potential from research as opposed to just like always existing and updating stuff into the future. Um, and on the question of knowing the sustainability to begin with, I think like yes and no, because on the one hand, it is like applicability, make sure you kind of have an idea of what is required to begin with, whilst also leaving room for like emergence from the research you're doing and allowing us to like go down a few different paths and seeing, oh, well, we discovered actually this thing is now true, which means the pathway to sustainability might be here that we maybe hadn't seen before. Very complicated one. We're happy to talk about it as we go. Um, any questions or thoughts to share online? Yeah, let us know if he's be unmuted. Okay. I'm happy to share a bit, but I, I'd rather obviously there um, that coming from participants. All right. If thoughts do come up, please get in touch with us um, either after this or like people in person will be out there in the lobby. Um, but one final thought, I'm aware we're exactly on time, so please do move on if you need to. Um, but this was the first time we've run this session. I think we want to think about ways to improve it, iterate upon it, um, and make sure that we're talking about sustainability in the right way and asking the right questions in the right format, all that kind of thing. So both um, just there, if we could put that in the chat on Zoom. Um, and it's also on the the collaborative document for this session. If you guys do have a chance to take a two or three minute survey just to share your thoughts, um, if you could do that now, that'd be great. Um, but otherwise, thank you for joining. Please do stay in touch with Ram at Turing.ac.uk. Thank you for the Turing way, uh, Scrib area as well, um, for the artwork. And yeah, if you could do this domain, that'd be huge. Thank you. Yeah, you've got a few minutes to survey. Um, uh, we'll be going back into the main room in the office later, uh, but we wrap up, but uh, that'll be starting in about four or five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> You tell I'm not very used to it. <laughs> yes. so.